They had this planned, they said. <laughs> well, ladies, I need your help today. I'm trying to build a house, and all I have to do it with are some playing cards. Can we try to build a house with playing cards this morning? I'm not an expert on it, but does anyone know how? We can try. Yeah. There's a few cards there, and let's let's just see what we can do here. I. I'll clean it up, don't worry. <laughs> I am not an expert at building houses with cards though, and I thought, what a better, what a, be what a great way to, to build a house with cards, right? And so these ladies are, are working diligently together, uh, and they're showing awesome teamwork, which is a great reminder that the church works together to be the church, uh, even if all times it doesn't work out sometimes. <laughs> Just too slippery, huh? It's difficult, right? Now, now if I had a house of cards built though, how easy would it be to knock it over? Very easy. Very easy, right? A house built of cards doesn't stand up against a whole lot of, of outside forces, including if I were to, you know, knock the table over or even just blow on it. And that's a great reminder for us in our faith to not build a flimsy house. As Jesus talks about today, he talks about building upon a, a solid foundation. But one of the other things, too, is not just the foundation, but what the house itself is built out of. We can, we can say we have a firm foundation in God, but if we don't build a solid house through joining together in worship and study and prayer and life together as the church, then sometimes that house doesn't matter what it's built on if it doesn't be, get built correctly. So we're going to take a look at that today with the three little pigs. And I know a number of folks have asked me about that story. It's one of their personal favorites, and I'm excited about it. But I wanted to, to recommend that we remember that, that when, when we build a house of cards, it doesn't matter what it's built on, it's still not built to last. But if we build a house that's built to last with something else, then we're going to see it stand up against even some of the strongest forces that come against it. Let's have a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you for your word and the foundation that it provides for us. Your words are like honey on our lips, God. It is so sweet to taste you through your word. God, help us to build not only on a strong foundation in your word, but build a sturdy house in which we know that you are there and in which you bring us new life and, and transformation as your church. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Well, the past few weeks, if you've been with us in worship, know that it's been a joyful journey as we look back on some of our beloved children's tales from Mary Had a Little Lamb, to the Ugly Duckling, to Little Red Riding Hood, we have seen God's truth nestled away in what we thought were simply children's fables. It's amazing how we can be reminded of the presence of God even in the simplest of stories. And yet I have to apologize. Because in all the fun and laughter and learning we have shared in, I have not adequately shared the telling of any one of these stories so far in an appropriate manner. So if you'll indulge me this morning, I want to remedy that. I want to invite you to get comfortable. I want to invite you to pretend that you are once again in your footy pajamas, sitting nestled warm and snug by the fireplace as Uncle Ryan proceeds to share with you the tale of the three little pigs. And as I've always told those I've read these tales to, I have reading glasses that I need to wear in order to fulfill my obligations to sharing this tale. So please get comfortable and let's read the three little pigs. Once upon a time, there were three little pigs who were all brothers. They lived together with their mother pig in the forest. One day, their mother said, Dearest sons, you are old enough and big enough to leave home and start your own life. Be wise and take good care of yourselves and of each other. So the three little pigs left home, and they each decided to build a house. Now the first little pig was very lazy. So he gathered some straw and built his house very quickly. Now the wolf can't catch and eat me, he said happily, and went back to playing and having fun. The second little pig was just as lazy as his brother, but he made his house of sticks. Great, he thought, now the wolf can't eat me either. 
His house didn't take very long to build, so soon he joined his brother playing games and carrying on. They were playing and singing and laughing while the third little pig was still building his house of bricks nearby. The other two little pigs laughed at him for working so hard, but he didn't mind. Instead, he said, when the big bad wolf comes, you'll see what happens. Some time later, after all the pigs had finished building their homes, the pigs were working outside together when all of a sudden, the big bad wolf came. Each pig squealed and oinked and ran into his own house to hide. Little pig, little pig, let me come in, said the wolf to the first little pig. Not by the hair on my chinny chin chin, said the first little pig bravely. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in, the wolf cried. And he huffed and he puffed and he blew the first little pig's house away. The pig squealed and ran to his brother's house nearby, but the wolf huffed and puffed and blew away the stick house too. The two little pigs squealed in terror and ran into the brick house that their brother had built. The wolf came to the third little pig's house, certain he would enjoy a full meal of three little pigs and knocked on the door. Little pigs, little pigs, let me come in. The first two pigs were already preparing to run away when the third pig stopped them and replied to the wolf, not by the hair on our chinny chin chins. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in, the wolf cried back. So he huffed and he puffed. Then he puffed and he huffed. Then he huff huffed. And he puff puffed, but he couldn't blow the house in. The big bad wolf was cunning though. He had another idea. He decided to break into the house through the chimney. But the clever little third pig had already thought of that. And when the big bad wolf dropped down the chimney, he fell right into a pot of boiling water and died. And the three little pigs lived happily ever after. The end. <laughs> well, that was fun, wasn't it? <laughs> and what a great story to go with today's scripture. As I thought about this particular tale um, and where it might go, it was only too easy to take a look at that and know exactly where it fit with the gospel. Now we can see the parallel here already, can't we? We can already look at this story, look at today's scripture and think what a perfect relationship that these two stories contain together. And it's sort of like the story that we read from that scripture. Someone builds a house and something rolls along in life just like a storm or an earthquake or some other type of problem. And either the house is built to last or it isn't. There is no in-between. And just like in the Three Little Pigs story, there is a choice we, too, have to make every day. We can take the easy way out and we can pay for it later. Or we can step into following Jesus totally and join in the benefits that he offers to us so freely in our salvation. I say that because following Jesus isn't always so easy. We know that. It often requires us to look beyond ourselves and this safe little world of me, myself, and I. Think of it this way. Who here has ever been to the beach? If you've been to the beach, you certainly have seen sandcastles being built. Have you not? You may have even built one yourself. And perhaps if you were like me as a child, you built it when the, the waves were on low tide. So there was plenty of beach to be had for us. And as I built that sand castle up, I began to notice throughout the day the waves getting closer and closer. Until eventually I had to do all I could to protect that sand castle. So I started by building a wall 
maybe a few feet away from my sandcastle. But eventually the waves began to wear away at that. So I thought, aha, I will build a channel and a moat around my sandcastle and the water will go around it. But as we know, that doesn't fully protect it either because eventually those waves will consume that sandcastle. The first two pigs in our story remind us of a very valuable lesson. And it's very valuable from a point of faith as we think about how it connects to the Word of God. There is no cutting corners with Christ. It's that simple. We're either all in or all out. There is no either or part way in sort of thing when it comes to discipleship. If we want to build a firm foundation that is truly going to stand up against what the world is going to throw at us, we won't achieve it by doing some light work and then expecting everything to just work out for us. God wants us all in for him. If our idea of faith and discipleship is to show up for just a few hours and then do nothing with it, we are simply building spiritual homes for ourselves that are going to collapse. If we want to have a hope in the God who saves us and see him even in the tough times that life brings, the bad times that life brings, and the hard times that life brings, then we need to spend every second we can with him, getting to know him and building our house on a solid foundation with solid building materials. The more we begin to know him, the more our relationship grows with him, the better prepared we become to weather the storm. It was the first and second pig's laziness that put them in a predicament where they risked losing their lives. They didn't take the time to wager the risk of the possibility that the wolf who prowled around them might show up. And if you recall from last week's lesson in Little Red Riding Hood, you'll remember that the wolf is sort of like Satan who is just seeking to devour us. And it's a lot like sin that is constantly tempting us off the, the right path toward the Lord. If we don't take the time to understand the consequences of being lazy in our faith, we are playing a game that we will eventually lose. And how would those pigs keep warm in winter? The first two pigs makes no mention of any sort of preparation for the winter time when the cold weather would set in and they needed to find warmth. Imagine having a fire built in a house made of straw or sticks. It's not going to work out well very quickly, is it? And yet the third pig knew better. The first two pigs only concern was their immediate desire to accomplish a task with the minimal effort required, without any thinking of the long-term consequences so they could simply enjoy the pleasures of life again. But we have another option. We can be like that third pig who knew this is more than just a place to lay my head at night. This needs to be a home that will last. We have the choice to not take the easy way out all the time because there will be times where our faith won't be easy. We will have questions. We will have doubts. We will have things thrown at us that make us question some things that we thought we knew. But if we have God and we have built that spiritual house on his word, we will find ourselves able to come through that with a deeper and richer faith than we had before. It was the third pig who realized that this is more than just a small place to sleep. It was the third pig who took the time to lay each brick individually, solidly with the mortar necessary to bind them together into a solid structure. It was the third pig who knew that when winter came, he would need a fireplace and a chimney to keep him warm and to cook his meals. And he knew that that big bad wolf had no chance at knocking it down when he came looking for a meal. In the end, his preparations, the time he took to invest in himself, made for all the things that ended up saving not only his life, but others as well. When we take time to cultivate our faith and establish that strong foundation in God and his word, 
We find ourselves able to lean on something stronger than whatever might try to knock us down. When we spend the time growing our relationship with Christ, we begin to find a home that we can rest in and know that the stuff outside trying to get us has to go through something stronger first. But it only happens if we pursue it and put our all into it. Faith that lasts is built over time through intentionality. And it comes from pursuing God ceaselessly. The best part about it, though, is that we don't have to do it alone. If you look at Hebrews 12, the author starts off by reminding us in this chapter that we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses and saints who are striving toward perfection in Christ with us. We have a beloved community called the church that is meant to be the place where we can support one another and hold each other accountable to building a solid foundation. If it weren't for the third pig, the other two would have been done for. But when they did find themselves struggling, they had somewhere to turn that they knew would offer them protection. And they most certainly learned a valuable lesson to not skip the time and effort to build a better house next time. So let us all take a lesson from our three oinking little friends and join together in building our lives on something that lasts. Amen? Amen. Amen.